Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Bindon on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into the Good Life experience. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so excited once again to welcome you to this special episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion. This is your center for biblically authoritative teachings where you receive the right teaching of God's word to make you that amazing success that the Father brought you on the earth to be. The Glory Devotion is not a religious thing. It is not a denominational thing. It is the voice of God as an answer to the heart cry of many who have been looking for the truth of God's word on a consistent basis. And here it is. As God's voice, the nations of the earth, giving the message of God to mature the body of Christ that Christ will reign through the church until principalities and powers in heavenly places discover the manifold wisdom of God and the church is set for his coming. And through it also many will be harvested into the kingdom. This is the purpose of glad devotion. And that is why you land on it. We inspire you to become part of those who are making it happen. Pray into it with all your heart for global spread and penetration. And also, Recommend it to all your friends. It's a good thing. Nobody has recommended someone to what the glory devotion that has ever regretted. No one. And there will never be anyone. Because whoever watches the glory devotion gets blessed and transformed. Also, pay to get it to other media platforms. I often say, if you own a media platform, you should have the glory devotion as your network's program. If you don't start now, others will take lead. And very soon, to be the the, the program of many media platforms or stations in the whole world. So take lead now, so that by the time others are joining, you are the proton in it. Praise God. Wow. We have been dealing with the subject of who is Jesus. And I made known to you by the Spirit that you should call our media after this week and place an order for the series, Who is Jesus? Get it to any friend at work, anywhere that you've been trying to explain Jesus and doesn't get it. Or even if you are saying you were a child of God, but your relationship with Jesus has not been that in-depth, listening and watching this message over and again will transform your life. If you're a minister of God, get these messages to your brethren. It will stabilize them in their knowledge of Jesus and impart passion to preach him among their friends and your church will become more relevant as your brethren and yourself begin to understand why we must preach Jesus. Get this message. We are going to move on today to look at another topic. It is Jesus, the only begotten Son of God. But before we go into details, I want to take this opportunity to once again remind all ministers of the gospel of Jesus who are watching us now, or if you know anyone that is yet to watch us, let the person hear this good news. That all ministers of God on the earth are gathering at the National Theater on the 11th of November in Ghana this year for the relevant ministry ministers conference. And this is not just another ministers conference. This has a target. It is a target of preparing every minister of God to be able to stand boldly before Jesus on the day of judgment. The Bible says that Herein is our love made perfect, that we may be bold on the day of judgment. Wonderful ministers of God. We cannot do all this labor and then stand before Jesus thinking in us that we have prophesied, we have taught, we have evangelized, only for him to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. If that would not have happened, Jesus wouldn't say it. But what happened to the people? 
They did so much, they were confident in what they did, but they were disqualified. The Bible says that when the master was going, he gave work to his servant. But the servant that is smart is the one that when the master comes, you will find him doing so. In other words, what you are doing must be relevant. There's no other time than now where the need for ministers to come together and redefine our focus in line with that of the master. So we can do this work and stand before him with joy. Be part of this conference. The portals are open this month only. Register and call the numbers to make arrangements for your accommodation if you are outside the city of Accra. The portals will be closed by the end of this month because from there we are going to focus on the new creation conference itself. The relevant ministry ministers conference is part of the new creation conference. But that portion is only for ministers. So if you're a minister, after you've registered for the minister session, ensure you also register for the conference itself because your registration is very important. Hallelujah. Wow. So our topic in this episode is Jesus, the only begotten Son of God. It is who is Jesus, part three. And the topic we are looking at is Jesus, the only begotten Son of God. Our main scripture is John chapter 1, verse 14, and it says that, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise God. Wow. If you want to understand, and the word became flesh, you have to read from verse 1 to verse 13. I read to you in uh, our first topic. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. But by him were all things made, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. The light shined in darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. You go on and on and on. Then concerning this word, it says that, and the word became flesh. So this word that in the beginning was with the Father and was God, it is this word that became flesh. And dwelt amongst men. And they beheld his glory. And he says, this glory that they were seeing was the glory of the only begotten of the Father. This is what we want to understand in this episode of the series, Who is Jesus? We put it that it is important to understand that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and when I say Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I mean the Jesus that Mary gave birth to, the Virgin Mary, who walked in Galilee and operated in Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago, okay? It's very important to understand that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was not an ordinary human being because he was neither created as Adam was, nor was he born by a man and a woman as any other human being is today. These two that I've mentioned are ordinary human beings. Adam was created a human being. And from him, through Eve and him, all other human beings are begotten. The Bible says in Acts 17 that every human being on the earth came from that one blood. Okay? So, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he did not come as Adam that God created from the earth and breathed into him. And he did not also come as a human being that a man and a woman produced. We said that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was the word of God that became flesh in the form of a man. Remember, everything was created by the word. The word could manifest in any form. But Jesus Christ of Nazareth was the word of God that was manifested in the form of a man. And I taught you a lot on how that manifestation happened. The Bible said that for that to happen, he put aside his glory and took upon himself the form of a servant. Because as the word, he was in the fullness of God and that form cannot be a servant. So he had to let go some divine glorious files so that he can take upon himself a lower nature, which is the nature of a pure Adam. Not born by a man and a woman. 
And we know that he put his glory down because in John 17, he said that, glorify me with the glory which I had with thee before I came. So he, he had a glory which he left and came down. And you can get a lot on that also from Philippians chapter 2. Okay? So Jesus of Nazareth, that work that people beheld his glory, as of the glory of the only begotten, he was that word that at a point in time divested himself of divine glory and took upon himself a lower form as a man. So he's not a human being in the ordinary sense of someone God created as a human being like Adam or someone that a man and a woman came together to produce. You must get this. Now, what the focus of this discussion in taking us deeper to discover who Jesus Christ is, is, is to explain to us the meaning of the only begotten of God. The Greek rendering of what is translated in English to us as only begotten is the phrase monogenes. Monogenes. Now, monogenes generally could refer to the only one born. So maybe a couple came together and they had only one son. That son could be referred to as a monogenes. However, the technical meaning of monogenes is not the general meaning. The technical meaning means the only one of his kind. It is not the only one born. The general meaning is used to describe the only one that is born. You see, but monogenes in the context of Jesus refers to the technical meaning, which means the only one of his type. The only one of his kind, gina. A gina refers to a type, a kind, a class. So when the Bible says that, and the word was made flesh and, we be, and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father. It wasn't saying that someone was walking in Nazareth and they beheld his glory, and his glory was like someone, did, the only person God gave birth to. No. What they were saying is that when they beheld Jesus of Nazareth, he had a certain glory, and the glory was like someone in his own class. And that was true. Because if you take Adam, Adam was also one of his own class. Nobody was made like Adam. So Adam could also be called a monogenes. Because God made him from the earth and breathed into him. After Adam, in fact, Eve could also be called a monogenist because he was the only one made the way she was made. She was made from Adam. But apart from Adam and Eve, the rest of the human race came from a man and a woman producing substances to produce a child according to the principle instituted by God. Are you following this? So, if they give birth to a child now, he's not... A, a new type of being, different from others. He's just a, one of the ordinary ones. But here comes a time that the Holy Ghost came on a virgin who didn't know a man, and by the impartation of that word, a seed was picked in the womb of a woman. So the woman contributed the body. God harvested the body self on the woman, and, and then Jesus was in that body. So he was the only one of his kind. No other human being living during that time was like Jesus. Because the Adam was dead by then. The Eve was dead by then. Every other human being that was alive as at the time Jesus was alive was a product of a man and a woman. Jesus was the only one of his kind. So the Bible calls him the only begotten of the Father. The only one of his kind that came from God. That's the meaning of the only begotten. Now, in our just previous episode, we made it clear that Jesus Christ is not a religious leader. And I am going to explain that to you now with this background I've given you about the meaning of the only begotten of God concerning Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But I'm going to go on a short break. And when I return, I'll explain to you what a religious leader is 
and let you know why we are saying Jesus Christ is not a religious leader. We are taking away the chaff of the wrong impressions people have so that we can lead you direct into the facts of what or who Jesus really is. I will be right back after this short break. Glory Hallelujah! The Final Global Movement presents the Relevant Ministry Ministers Conference 2021 with Dr. David Bender. The only true measure of success in ministry is relevance. There is something called vain labor in ministry, which as a minister of God you need to be aware. Without relevance in ministry, it is possible to labor in vain. It's not about laboring. You can labor in vain. Are you a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ? This conference will give you the equipment you need to be a successful minister before the Father. It's happening live on the 12th of November 2021 at the Exhibition Hall of the National Theatre, Accra, Ghana. Time is 8 a.m. Register at www.finalglobalmovement.org or call 055-792-7744. Admittance is free but strictly by registration. Register today for the Relevant Ministry Ministers Conference with Dr. David Binder. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Life is good. Enjoy. Praise the Lord. So who is a religious leader? We put it that a religious leader is a natural human being born of a man and a woman who claims to have some revelation of some sort into worshipping a deity or to have discovered a certain philosophy of living. This is a religious leader. A religious leader is a natural human being, just like any other human being. Born of a man and a woman. And by one way or the other, the person now claims to have some revelation of a certain sort, of a certain deity, or has insight into a certain philosophy of living, and people are following him. These are religious leaders. Now, Jesus is not in this class. Because he is not a natural human being as the religious leaders are. And I just explained to you, Jesus was the only begotten of God. The only one of his kind. That's why I told you that the greatest mistake on the earth now is for a man to think that Jesus is in the class of all that they call religious leaders. That's the greatest mistake a human being could ever make. Because you are kind of classifying the only begotten among the, the natural ones. It's like you have a flock of sheep and then there is a white goat amongst them. And you label all of them as sheep. No. The goat is unique. So, whatever somebody may call a religious leader was born by a man and a woman. There's no disproof anywhere. Every religion on the earth knows that their leader was born by a man and a woman. Jesus was not born by a man and a woman. He was the word. That became flesh in the form of a man. So Jesus is not what the technical meaning of a religious leader is. So he's not a religious leader. Who is he then? Jesus was an intrusion of divinity into the human world in the form of a man. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. This word laid down some form of glory and intruded into humanity. And they found him, the only begotten of God. 
He was an intrusion of a divine thing, a divine something into humanity. In other words, he is someone directly from God. He did not come by the agency of human parents. In John 8.42, the Bible says that he said of himself, For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Do you see that? So for every religious leader, they are born by a man and a woman. Then at the point in time, they say they have a calling. Or they've gone somewhere and an angel reveals something to them. Or they've studied so much that they have some revelation about life. These are their fathers and mothers. They know them. Jesus was not like that. He was sent purposely by God into the human realm. So he has a divine origin. Let me read it to you. I just read part of the verse. Let's read the whole thing. John chapter 8. The 42nd verse. Oh, I love Jesus. He says, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth. He says, I proceeded forth. I came out. I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Did you know that? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. So Jesus was the utterance of the Father. He was in the bosom of the Father. So for that word to take shape in Mary's womb, it had to proceed from God. It's not like a man and a woman meeting themselves on the earth, producing body for a spirit to be released from God to form a human being. This one was by the intentional release of the Almighty Father. Oh, Baroko Shatalamando Sokoba. We said that there was something divine about the origin of Jesus. The origin of Jesus is not something natural like any other man and a woman. So Jesus Christ of Nazareth was the only of his kind, monogenes. He came directly from God. The utterance of God taking material from the womb of Mary. This is Jesus. We said that this is what separates him from ordinary human prophets and religious leaders. So who is a prophet? A human being that the spirit of God is using or has used. That's a prophet. Who is a religious leader? A human being that has claimed some knowledge somewhere to have access to some deity or a philosophy. But who is Jesus? The intrusion of God's word in the form of a man. And the word was made flesh. So Jesus is not a prophet. In the ordinary sense of a prophet. Just not a religious leader. In any sense. Praise God. Praise God. We said that one cannot truly receive Jesus. And become a son of God until this truth dawns on his or her heart. So if you are watching me right now. Maybe you say I'm a Christian. But you still think that oh you know. Uh, that religion, I know that they have their, that, that their leader they are following. That other religion, they have their leader they are following. Mine is Jesus. You are not born again. You don't know him. Because in your thinking, you think he's the same as the other names of religious leaders. It means you don't know if there's anything divine about his origin. Which means you don't know who he is. And you must know who he is to believe in him. That's why I ask them, who do men say I am? If you don't know who he is, how can you say I believe in him? So any Christian who thinks that it is not right to preach to religious people is not born again because that's no Jesus. Any Christian who thinks there are many ways to God is not born again because that's no Jesus. This is why this message is so important. It's so important. And if you don't know this reality of the divine origin of Jesus, your Christianity is, it hasn't even begun. Whatever you call Christianity will be vacillating like this. You cannot have a relationship with the living Jesus that we do. If you don't know this about Jesus. That is why sometimes we wonder which Jesus people call their Lord. Because if your Jesus is a religious leader, then he died like anyone else. He is in the grave somewhere. Even though you are confessing that he is alive, you know that he is dead. Because all religious leaders are dead. 
It is only when you know that he is the only begotten. There was something divine about his origin. He was not an ordinary human being. Then you can, your belief in his resurrection and ascension will be truly real. And that's when you can truly get born again. So we have a lot of work to do. There are many people who think they are born again that are not born again because they don't know Jesus. And until this truth about Jesus dawns on you, you cannot believe in who he is and you cannot get born again. Wow. This is part three of who Jesus is. Make sure to order for the whole message and distribute it to people and also watch it yourself over and again. Have been watching us. It begins from stepping into God's plan for your life. The plan of God for every human being before the world began is this. I'm making you human, but at a point in time, receive Jesus and become my adopted son. So if you only were born by a man and a woman and you've not yet received Jesus, you haven't stepped into God's plan. So the reason why people will, be, will end up in destruction in hell is not because they were not nice human beings and they didn't build houses and, do, and they didn't do philanthropic work. It is because they never began in God's plan. They did not continue in God's plan. They began as humans, but they didn't finish out to become sons of God. And only sons of God are going to be in the eternal kingdom. That was it, except a man be born again. He cannot enter the kingdom. What does it take to be born again? Believe with all your heart that truly Jesus is the word of God that became flesh and came to this world. He died and rose again and is Lord today. And affirm that lordship in your heart. Something will take place in your spirit and you become a new creature. You want that to happen? Then say this after me with all your heart. Declare with me. I believe Jesus died. I believe he was the son of God. I believe he was raised from the dead. I believe Jesus is Lord. And I affirm that Jesus is Lord. Praise God. If you have done this with all your heart, you are born again, make sure you continue to follow us regularly on the regular devotion and receive truth that will help you to grow in Christ. And also ensure you get planted in a Bible teaching and a Bible practicing church. And remain in Christ until he comes because he's going to come very soon. Surely I'm going to meet you in our next session as we delve deeper into the subject matter of who is Jesus. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Binder. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.